Space exploration fascinates every one of us, but traveling to another planet for a vacation is just too far away from possibility as of today. This, combined with Mars' brutal conditions, means you probably won't see any Mars advertisements in your local travel agents anytime soon. In the decades that we've dreamed of colonizing Mars, futurists have come up with a dazzling menu of ways we could achieve comfortable living on such a faraway planet. But most of these concepts would inevitably result in an Apollo 13-esque scenario eventually. There's just too much that can go wrong, and too many safety concerns to account for. However, we may have finally cracked the code for how we could sustainably and safely colonize and populate Mars. And in the past few years, many scientists, physicists, and engineers working for space agencies like NASA and SpaceX have knuckled down to determine ways of making our neighboring planet habitable. CEO of SpaceX, Elon Musk, is a philanthropist and billionaire who is pursuing the dream of colonizing Mars in the near future. Well, that might be an understatement given his competitors' comparatively longer time frames. The farthest humans have gone from our home planet were the Apollo missions to the moon by NASA, during which time astronauts traveled 250,000 kilometers through deep space to reach their destination. But the moon is a natural satellite orbiting Earth. Getting a spacecraft to lunar orbit is a matter of performing a TLI burn and inserting into the Moon's gravitational influence with the right trajectory. Mars, on the other hand, is 55 million kilometers away at the very best of times and requires a much longer and trickier Hohmann transfer to maneuver into orbit. Plus, there's this weird thing we humans have for eating and, you know, staying alive, so you have to pack enough food for about a year of traveling. Therefore, it's very hard to talk about terraforming Mars when getting any sizable creature to the red planet in the first place is enough to give an engineer a migraine. Terraforming such a distant celestial body when we haven't even set foot on it yet demands us to overcome several huge hurdles, but for the sake of not letting this video dissolve into a 12-hour lecture on the practicalities of deep space travel, let's just assume that we have the capabilities to transport some reasonably large gear to Mars and start from there. One thing before we begin. Right now, I'm fresh on YouTube and trying to deliver quality astronautical engineering videos that hit the spot between science fiction concepts and realistic scientific possibilities. And if you subscribe to 26 Dimensions, it would really encourage me to continue adding to my library of videos. You may also be interested in some of my other similar videos, such as this one about Mars' ancient oceans, since we're on a related topic. That's enough of me begging, so let's get right into terraforming Mars. In our case, terraforming means transforming a celestial body to resemble the living conditions of Earth and to create a habitable environment for human life. With Mars, there are a lot of difficulties and threats we will have to overcome in each stage of the transformation. Firstly, let's talk about the atmosphere. Mars has a very thin atmosphere, and the atmospheric pressure on the red planet is just 6 millibars. That's approximately 0.6% of Earth's pressure. Without life support spacesuits, you would die very fast. So before we begin fertilizing the soil, planting trees, and building colonies, we should sort out the air problem. In one experiment conducted at NASA, a person was accidentally exposed to such low atmospheric pressures and fell unconscious within 15 seconds. It took 25 seconds after he passed out for the chamber to pressurize again. When asked what he felt during the event, he said that the last thing he remembered was that his saliva had started to boil. Requirement one noted don't explode due to low air pressure. We need to build an insulating, breathable atmosphere around Mars, and this can be done by exposing greenhouse gases to the hypersurface. To initiate the greenhouse effect, we need to release the gases into Mars' thin atmosphere. This can be done using chlorofluorocarbons, some of the same chemicals that are released by our ACs and refrigerators. On Earth, there are tight restrictions on CFCs because planet Earth doesn't tend to like it when we blast it with greenhouse gases. But on Mars, these chemicals could provide a greenhouse effect thousands of times stronger than carbon dioxide and ensure that we can maintain climate stability long term. It is estimated that about 0.3 microbars of these gases needs to be introduced into the Martian atmosphere to start melting the red planet's ice caps. With the melting of these ice caps, we can turn the planet into a warm and wet environment and further advance the effect of warming the planet. So far, we haven't spotted any extraterrestrial polar bears at the ice caps, so we have the green light. We can start to acquire the CFCs needed by mining Mars' fluorine-rich soil, so we'll add established mining locations to our to-do list. 
Before we forget it, let's address the low gravitational force on Mars. The red planet is around 40% the size of Earth, so comparatively weak. Despite what the Martian shows you, you wouldn't be able to walk like you do on Earth. You would probably just glide hop around, but we can get used to that. The real issue is whether this significantly lowered gravity will have any long-term effects on our inhabitants. We've had astronauts in microgravity conditions at six months at a time on board the International Space Station, but spending your life term in 40% Earth gravity could result in some nasty problems. Naturally, humans will probably adapt to this and our bodies would become more ideal for Mars gravity. However, we cannot bet on this and we might never be able to cope with Mars gravitational force. If this were the case, we would have to create artificial gravity through centrifugal force, that is, by building homes that spin round at high speeds to mimic the pull of Earth's gravity. Admittedly, that is the gloomier prospect, because we'd all have to live in contained living spaces and couldn't set up normal houses on our futuristic terraformed Mars. So, test effects of low gravity on humans is the next item on our to-do list. The gravity is also a problem for the atmosphere, and it'll be very tricky to achieve an atmospheric pressure of one bar because the gas would disperse far away. So if we were to make our own atmosphere, we would need to pump huge volumes of gas above the surface. Add, produce as much gas as possible to our list, because boy will we need a lot of it. A possible way of kickstarting the development of an atmosphere would be by nuking the poles. You heard that right. This is an idea presented by Elon Musk, who reckons that by smashing the ice caps of the planet, you could release a lot of the greenhouse gases trapped in the soil. There are ongoing debates about whether this option is feasible or not. You could also get smart and try shooting asteroids at Mars. That is also a legitimate idea. Asteroids and comets are rich sources of frozen ammonia, and if we could make hundreds of thousands of such objects to crash into the surface, the ammonia would break down into nitrogen and hydrogen gas and help raise the atmospheric pressure. Since ammonia is a greenhouse gas too, it would have the dual effect of raising the planet's temperature as well. But you can see how a strategy like this could get very costly very quickly. Our next problem is Mars temperatures, which also will not be trivial to deal with. On the surface of Mars, the temperature can drop as low as negative 70 degrees Celsius, which is lower than the average in Antarctica. Just because Mars is red does not mean it's warm. In fact, the highest temperatures the red planet reaches would be considered mild on planet Earth. This is thanks to the faraway location of Mars from the Sun, and a very thin atmosphere to support the greenhouse effect that makes Earth comfortable. 96% of Mars' atmosphere is carbon dioxide, but this is still only enough to create 1% of Earth's air pressure. So building up an atmosphere really should be high up on our list of priorities. But in the meantime, we can put up with electric heating systems for a while. And then you have the absence of a magnetic field, which is quite a cool gift planet Earth gives us, considering that without it, we'd be particularly dead. Earth's magnetosphere protects us from dangerous solar radiation, wind, and flares. You also need one to stop the atmosphere packing up and leaving, wasting all our hard work on task one. Studies suggest that Mars lost its magnetosphere about 4 billion years ago. Before then, it's very possible it had conditions similar to Earth. My Mars Ancient Oceans video exists for a reason, nudge nudge. To create a magnetosphere, we could liquefy the planet's core. Yes, that's a serious idea, and no, I'm not going to explain it in this video. Just add, give Mars a magnetosphere to the list. Some of the other difficulties we will face on Mars include, but are not limited to, reduced light levels causing navigation problems and a possible dose of sadness, ionizing solar and cosmic radiation that bombard you every waking moment, molecular instability causing molecules to just nope and disintegrate in the atmosphere, dust storms the size of entire nations wreaking havoc left, right, and center, deadly soil that you definitely don't want to make mud pies out of, and not a drop of liquid water in sight. Sounds like heaps of fun. Not to mention that the process of ticking off each task in our to-do list would substantially drain the Earth's resources, meaning it'd be a good idea to invest in asteroid mining to stock up on metals as we terraform Mars. You'll also want to schedule in quite a remarkable number of rocket launches, because the materials and energy demanded to complete the terraforming is staggeringly large. But once you've filled up your atmosphere, simulated a massive magnetic field, created some oceans, dealt with the problems of gravity, planted trees, built settlements, and ensured that the dust storms don't come rolling by to wipe away all your hard work, 
Then you can sit back and appreciate the crushing financial ruin you've brought upon yourself. Thanks for watching. On a serious note, it is very difficult to terraform an entire planet like Mars, but there's still hope we can begin the process soon with advanced technologies and more sustainable methods of space travel. It would be humanity's greatest achievement if completed and would encourage us to travel even further through our solar system. Many people think it's inevitable that we'll terraform Mars, and I'd like to believe that too. It's comforting to know that we won't be confined to just our home planet forever and never explore the depths of outer space. If you enjoyed my mind-crippling attempt at explaining this subject simply, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to 26 Dimensions. Every subscriber matters, as does every like on the video. I have many more space-related videos like this coming soon, such as whether we could live on Jupiter. Thanks for your support, and I'll see you next time.